Hello everyone, my name is Rahul Nirmal. As you may or may not know, in the Windows 10 operating system, it offers a built-in file compression system that can take many files and folders and compress them all into one single archive file. In the market, there are many types of file compression algorithms and file types. Windows uses the zip format, and so when you create archive files with their built-in tool, they'll end in the file extension .zip. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about an alternative to creating these archive files. There is a free software that you can download called 7-Zip, and they use their own proprietary algorithm and file format that ends in .7-Z. And the 7Z files are often shown to be more efficient and can compress better than zip files. Now, why would you want to compress your files and folders into one single archive file in the beginning? There are two main reasons. The one first main reason is that because your many files and folders are compressed into one single file, it can make sharing them with friends and family over a medium such as email much easier. And in addition, these files and folders can be compressed and you can save a substantial amount of space, which can make sharing these files faster over the internet, as well as saving space on your computer, especially if you are storage conscious. So in today's video, I'm gonna be discussing how to download and install the 7-Zip software, how to create an archive file out of sample files on my PC, and then at the end of the video, I'll show you how to create an encrypted archive that will be password protected. And this is one feature that Windows built-in zipping tool cannot do. So without further ado, let's go over to my Windows 10 PC and get started. All right, I'm at my Windows 10 PC, and we're gonna begin by downloading and installing 7-Zip onto our computer. So you'll navigate your web browser to www.7-zip.org and you'll come across this screen. And we're gonna download the 7-zip 19 version instead of the alpha, just to make sure we have the most stable version of the software. And then you have two options, the 32-bit or 64-bit. If you don't know what version your Windows 10 PC is, you can find out by going to the start menu, typing in about, and then you'll click on About Your PC. When you scroll down a little bit in the Data Specifications area, you'll see System Type, and it shows here my PC is 64-bit with this x64 based processor. So I'm going to download this version right here. Just click on the Download button. Let's finish the downloading, and then we'll open it to install it. Okay, so I want it to extract here. And that's it, the software has been installed. So let's go ahead now and start using it. I'm gonna go ahead and open File Explorer and navigate to C Drive on my PC. And for the purposes of this video, I've created a sample folder called Rahul-Test. Inside of it, you'll see there are 16 files totaling 28.7 megabytes in size. And these files all have a variety of file sizes as well as file types. Now, I'm going to use the 7-Zip software to take all of these files and then compress them into one single archive file. One mistake that many users make is they try to create new files in the root directory of the C drive. Unfortunately, that is something that Windows does not like its users to do. Allow me to demonstrate. So let's say I want to archive rahul.test and everything inside of it into one single file. I'll right click on this context menu. When you install 7-Zip, you'll notice that a new entry has been created in your context menu here. And then I'm gonna to go to add to archive. You'll see it's gonna to try to create it in my root directory of my C drive with the same name as my folder. But immediately when I hit okay, it will fail by saying access is denied. While Windows doesn't like us to create individual files in the C drive's root directory, it has no problems if you want to create new folders, as I'll show right now. I'll right click and click on New Folder. Just leave it as New Folder. And there, Windows has no problems with me creating my own folder in the root directory. So I'm going to try to archive this folder and all of its contents again into a single file, but this time instead of placing it in the C drive's root directory, I'm going to place it in the new folder I created called New Folder. I'll right-click on Rahul-Data, go to 7-Zip, 
uh, to archive. And this time I'm going to change the output directory to that new folder. And I'm going to leave everything as default and hit OK. And it completed successfully. So let's go inside the new folder and see what was created. So it created that new 7-zip type file. And it has a file size of 22 megabytes. And then when I open it with 7-zip, if I go into 7-zip and open archive, there's my folder, and there are all the contents. Everything is intact. So as I said earlier, this takes up 22 megabytes. And when I look at the folder here, and I'll see how much that and the 16 files inside take up, and they take up 28.8 megabytes. So to go from 28.8 megabytes to 22 megabytes is a noticeable decrease in space, and that can really be helpful to people who are short on space. Do keep in mind that the compression ratio, or how well your files will compress, depends on many factors. One large factor is the type of file you are trying to compress. Let's go back into my Rahul dash data. For instance, one type of file that usually compresses well are WAV files, which is a type of audio file. So when I click on this file, you'll see it takes up 9.92 megabytes. And let me try to compress that. And I'm going to add just this one file to an archive. So you'll see that it went from 9.92 megabytes to 6.72. But when I go to another type of audio file, an MP3 file, and I'm going to try to compress this, so it takes up 5.04 megabytes. And I'm going to try to compress it again. And the output file is pretty much the exact same size. So really no compression occurred at all. So file type can definitely play a factor in how well your files will compress. And then another factor is also the settings that you use in 7-zip, such as here. For the purposes of the video, I'm just using the default settings. But this is all these settings are something you can play around with to see if you can achieve better compression ratios. And this is something you'll just have to do some trial and error on. You had seen how I had just compressed this WAV file and this MP3 file into 7-zip archive files. So a 7-zip file can contain as little as one individual file to thousands of files and folders. So let's say I just want to do one file. I just want to add one file to a 7-zip. I just select one file and then right click, 7-zip, add to archive. And if I want to select multiple, I'll just drag until I have the number of files I want selected, like these nine. And then, again, go to Add to Archive. And then if I wanted to archive an entire folder, instead of selecting every individual file here, you can simply just go to the root directory and click on the folder itself, and then just add it to Archive. Now I want to show you how to create an encrypted archive file, which is password protected. So earlier, I had taken an archive of Rahul-data, and I'd placed that 7-zip file in my new folder here. So I'm going to create one again in this folder, but this time that will be password protected. So I'm going to click on this folder, right-click, go to 7-zip, add to archive. Again, I'll make the output directory that new folder. And this time, I'm going to call it Rahul-data2. And I'm going to leave everything here as default, but here in the encryption area, I'm going to place a password. So 7-zip uses the AES-256 encryption method, which is extremely secure and difficult to crack. However, if you have a weak password, then there's still a chance that your security can be broken. So you want to make sure that your password is not the weakest link in your security chain. So here I've decided to make a strong password. By placing, I made a password called Rahul Visited Orlando, and I've replaced some letters with numbers and some special characters. So I'm just going to copy this password, place it in 7-zip, then re-enter it again, then hit OK to create that archive. Let's go back into new folder, and here's the 7-zip file, which is this time password protected. So I'm going to try to open it with 7-zip. 
And again, all the files are there. So it looks like you may think that I can access it, but not so fast. When I try to open one individual file, I'm prompted for a password. And then also if I try to extract any of these files outside, I'll also be prompted for the password. So let's say I want to extract this file. I'm prompted for a password. Let's suppose I put an incorrect password, just one, two, three. And I hit OK. And the process failed. So let me try again. But this time I'm going to put the correct password. And now the process was successful. And there is one file I'd extracted from that archive. So that is how you can create a password protected archive and also how to access it and extract files from one. Thank you for watching my video on 7-Zip. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, which is right below the video. And if you have time, please also hit the subscribe button to subscribe to my channel as I'll be creating more content like this in the future. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.